Hey everybody, this is James from South Texas RC and BRB Racing. Today is going to be my part three of the Arma Vortex. So a lot of people want to do a comparison on this truck of the Traxxas Rustler, the Stampede, and even the Haas. So today I'm going to show you some simple numbers and what actually needs to be done to this truck to make it run in safe operation, not burn up your electronics, and just have a good time. So today we're going to review Arma Vortex and the Traxxas Stampede. So if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And also let everyone else know about the channel and tell them to subscribe. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is going to be ratio. The difference on the Vortex, the Typhon, the Granite, and the Big Rock. They're going to be basically no difference in that differential. The diff on the Vortex, Typhon, Granite, Big Rock, even the Rustler, and the Stampede are a 37 ring gear over a 13 pinion gear input. So what you do is going to be 37 into 13. Divide those and you're going to come up with 2.84. And now the spur. Let's do the Rustler and the Stampede first because they are geared the same. There are 54 on the spur and 11 on the pinion. So you divide those into each other and you get 4.90. Now take the 2, the 2.84 that you got from your diffs and the 4.90. You multiply those together and the Traxxas Stampede and the Traxxas Rustler are going to be running 13.91 on the ratio. Now the Typhon, the Granite, and the Big Rock are also geared the same. The differential, the 3713, comes out to 2.84, and the spur, a 57, divided into 15, is going to be 3.80. Now take that 2.84 times the 3.80, and you're going to get a ratio of 10.79. The Vortex has the same diffs, of course. You're going to find that in most of these one-tenth scale models. It's got a 37 on the ring, 13 on the pin, which is going to make that 2.84. You do the spur gear, 57, and an 18 pinion, and that's going to equal 3.16, which is going to make the Vortex an 8.97 ratio. So the Trax is at 13.91, the Typhon, the Granite, and the Big Rock are at 10.79, and the Vortex comes in at 8.97. Now let me explain about the ratio. A higher ratio is actually geared lower for more acceleration and less motor load. A lower ratio is geared higher, less acceleration, more motor load, more top speed, but more heat. Now let's look at KVs. A higher KV has less winds of thinner wire carrying more amps at fewer volts and moves a smaller gear. A lower KV has more winds of thinner wire and it will carry more volts at fewer amps making higher torque moving a bigger gear but slower. So a 3500 KV which is going to be in your Stampede and your Rustler are best at the smaller pinion gear. A 3200 KV, which is slightly a little bit different, a bigger pinion, but don't overdo it, equals heat. The next topic to look at is going to be the tires. The Vortex tire size is a 4.53. The Typhon is a 4.6. The Granite is a 5.0. The Big Rock is a 5.15. The Rustler is a 4.5. And the Stampede comes in at 4.6. The bigger the tire, the more the load. The smaller the tire, the lesser of the load. Like an example, on my slash, I put bigger tires to make it a monster slash. I geared it from its original 5413 down to what the Traxxas Stampede has, which is an 11. So I dropped it 54 over 11. Why? Larger tires, more of a load, more resistance, more heat. 
So basically on the granite and the big rock, in honesty, I would gear that truck 5714. The Traxxas Rustler and the Stampede are good with that 11. The Typhon's good at the 15 and the Vortex. I'll get back to you on that one at the end of this. So now let's look at batteries and heat. The Vortex box stock is 57 over 18 geared. So with the batteries on a test that I did with this gearing, running a 5200 milliamp battery 2S pack was nine minutes at 34 miles per hour. Running a 5200 3S, I got 11 minutes at 54 miles per hour and a 7600 3S battery, I got 20 minutes at 54 miles an hour. And that was hard running at non-stop. But now here we get to the problem, the heat. The ESC was at 121 degrees. The motor was at 168 degrees on 3S. And on the 2S, I was running 111 degrees on the ESC and the motor at 144. What they're calling for on this model is 170 degrees max on the motor and 125 degrees max on the ESC. The Vortex, plain simple out, is going to be over geared, guys. Now let's get to it on the gearing. So now I'm going to drop this down to a 5715. Now doing other tests, running the same batteries, a 5200 2S, it changed to 13 minutes. Got 30 miles per hour, that's only four less. Now the next one is a 5200 3S, and I got 14 minutes, 46 miles per hour, and that's only eight less than the box stock. Then last battery to test was a 7600 milliamp on a 3S, got 38 minutes, 46 miles per hour, and once again, that was only eight less miles Per hour and this was hard running non-stop but heat let's look at that heat 98 degrees on the ESC on 3s with a motor temp of 121 on a 3s and on the 2s ran 86 degrees on the ESC and 111 on the motor so the temperature right there tells you this vehicle is over geared now, of course, with normal running, the pack times will go up, but I did notice the LVC, which means low voltage cutoff, seems to trigger too soon on this truck when I'm running the 5200 with a 50C discharge, put it around about 3.7 on the cell drop. Other times it shot a little bit higher, around 4.0, and that was just basically the ripple load of the diode it detected the drop. But when I run the 7600s with a 75C discharge, it goes down to as far as 3.2, the norm, and 3.4 per cell. I'm telling you guys, this is a very power hungry truck. So best thing to do so far is let's gear that with a 15 tooth pinion. Let's drop those motor temperatures down. Let's run a high milliamp battery with a high discharge and you're going to have yourself some absolute fun with this truck. So as a recap, the ratio we went from an 8.97 to a 10.79. We took the heat from 121 at the ESC and the motor at 168 to 98 degrees on the electronic speed control and 121 temp on the motor. And of course, that is, you know, the 7600, 75C batteries, 20 minutes to 38 minutes on hard running to normal running is going to be 38 minutes and longer. I say right now, with that gearing, we're going to be in a safe place. Sometimes max speed can cost you max dollars from you when it burns up. Note, if you're going to go with bigger tires, like a lot of people do, make sure that you drop the pinion at least one more tooth if you're just going a little bit slightly larger, because that all plays into the ratio and final drive of this vehicle. So everybody, 
All I have to say is the next thing I want to show you is going to be one other complaint on this truck that I experienced. So let me take you over here to it. On the bottom of the truck, there is this hole right here. That thing right there will suck in rocks for some reason. And I've noticed all of a sudden I get lodge steering. It'll lodge right up there against it. So I would say on this, find something to cover this hole with. Don't leave this hole open because you're going to get rocks in there. Jam up your steering. Worst case, you're going to break steering component. You're going to bust a servo. Or it's going to cause the vehicle to go out of control. And then you're going to damage something else. Next up, I want to show you the value portion. I don't have a Rustler 4x4 here with me. But I can tell you that the price-wise, you're looking at this model here versus the Rustler. I'm going to pull that up real quick and show you the final discussion. Okay, now time to wrap this up with y'all. I'm going to make this very short. So I pulled up the Traxxas Rustler 4x4. And just to show just a quick look on their product, you do see it has a wheelie bar here in the back that looks to be included on this one. When you look at the internal for the electronics, you have a naked motor, just a motor. The speed control, same thing, just a naked speed control, nothing there. So no fans, no heat sink. Then going down a little bit more, let's see if we've got what I'm looking for here. Price-wise, you're looking at $429 for this truck here. I did read it takes for the battery expansion. You're going to have to buy, now let's hang on to the words buy, buy additional straps for the battery tray. You're going to have to buy an additional fan. You're going to have to buy an additional heat sink. You're going to have to buy an additional fan with this one does look to come with the wheelie bar. So we're looking at purchasing a fan for motor, a fan for the electronic speed control, a heat sink, and to run a larger battery, some straps. So that's four items that are right there. Let me jump over to the Vortex. This one here, you are getting a Spectrum DX3 radio with this here. So you're getting a really super cool radio. And I will show you on my truck real quick here. Of course, everybody, don't judge. This thing is super dirty. Even got a rock down in here chilling. Uh, like I said, I've, I've put this through a very brutal test for y'all. I've run it hard. I've done speed passes. I've done jumps. I have just absolutely tortured this truck. Nothing on it has broken at all. Zero repairs needed. The tires are holding up, super great condition. Really no complaints, even the body, great shape still. Of course, a couple of scratches here and there, but let's go back to the value. So with this truck here, you're paying 379 for this vehicle versus theirs is gonna be higher in price. But automatic, out of the box, box stock, we're getting heat sink. We're getting a fan. We're getting a fan. We're getting adjustable straps. And of course, comes with the wheelie bar. Oh, another rock chilling. So this one here does come fully equipped, basher's dream out of the box with nothing else to buy with the exception of this part right here. A 15 tooth pinion, 12 bucks. Versus the other vehicle, when you put together a heat sink and a fan, and a fan, and the additional straps, about 80 bucks, 90 bucks more to equip that model. Then we're going to look at my Stampede. Coming up next, let me grab it. And the Stampede is so similar to the, uh, the Rustler with electronics-wise and gearing. Well, they are the same electronics and, and the gearing setup. So, same thing on this Pete. It's a 4x4. I have a motor, completely naked. I got the speed controller, completely naked. 
and on this model wheelie bar so the only thing additional on this vehicle that I would have to do is going to be put a heat sink and a fan and a fan and I also had to buy this adaption kit to run the larger pack so looks like in all theory we're doing expansion fan heat sink and fan to get a close comparison to the other models and of course guys know we're getting up there in the warmer time of the year I'm not gonna go out and bash and run this without the protection this is gonna be the fan clips on to the electronic speed control this one was actually 24 bucks for this 25 bucks and then you've got a Power Hobbies fan that I picked up that will fit on here. This was about eh, 12, 13 bucks. And it's kind of cool because it's got a metal heat sink inclusive with the fan. So some of these tiny things you get, you have to buy the fan separate from the heat sink. This is all in one. Haven't tested this product out yet, guys. I'll let you know exactly how this is going to perform. Of course, I've run Traxxas fans before. you got to be real careful of the rocks getting up inside of here because you really have no screening protection. I might make a little screen protection somehow for this, show you all how I did that, and I'll let you know the performance of this. And once again, guys, I'm going to show you. Here's the battery packs that I've used for the test. And this is actually a lower, way lower discharge than it should be, but it did... Did decent for me so we have the 2s 5200 we use the 5200 50c and then the most optimal battery for it was the 7600 75c so everybody race on bash on if you like what you hear go ahead smash that bell subscribe and until next time y'all keep cool